Hi, I'm Richard Gordon, the founder of Quantum Touch, and I first learned about this method back in 1978. An old man showed me how to use breathing and body awareness exercises to move energy. I couldn't believe my eyes at what I saw. My girlfriend had a major scoliosis at the time. He just touched her hips and they rolled back to alignment. He touched the cranial bones and they moved. My jaw was on the floor. I didn't believe anybody else could do this. But after learning the basic exercises of breathing and body awareness, I was able to cause these kinds of movements myself. The first extraordinary experience I had of this work was when my friend brought a bunny rabbit to my house around Easter time. I thought it was so cute until I saw little pellets all over the floor. So I decided to capture the rabbit, but the rabbit didn't want to be captured. So I cornered the rabbit and it was trembling under my hands. And I thought, well, why don't I run energy into the rabbit? That's what we call the breathing body awareness exercise of moving the energy, we call it running. So I ran energy into the rabbit and it's trembling under my hands. And within seconds, the rabbit relaxed. And then it pushed against my hands and it flipped over on its back as if it was sunning itself in Hawaii. That was one of my first jaw-dropping experiences of the work. But over the years, I've seen so many extraordinary things. I've taught thousands of people to do this work and the work has continued to evolve. We have the level one work where we're able to see pain reduced. We see the body's own potential for self-healing accelerated. We like to say that the definition of a healer was someone who was sick and got well. And a great healer was someone who was very sick and got well quickly. We like to think of ourselves as facilitators to allow the other person to heal themselves more quickly, more effectively, more easily. I'm simply holding a field of this life force energy that they call chi, ki, or prana and then letting their body intelligence and spiritual intelligence decide how to do the healing. The work has evolved over the decades. We have the level two work where we're able to work as or more powerfully than level one and at any distance, it's extraordinary stuff. We've taken it so much further into the law of attraction to be able to use the energy to attract realities you want and so much more. It's continuing to evolve so I invite you to explore this work. Deborah Gare is gonna share a process of seeing and perceiving energy. This is amazing stuff. Well, hello there, everyone. I'm Deborah, and I've been super fortunate to have been part of the Quantum Touch community since 2002. And today, it's my great pleasure and privilege to share with you a group process. The group process is in four parts and it's called an inner eye invitation to seeing substratally. So as I said it's going to be in four parts and what it will do is it will open, it will open the window that's right there within you to view a whole new vision without, where you will actually be a seer of the substratum, of the subatomic, where you will see deep, deep into the secret nature of matter. So there are so many benefits to seeing substratally, so many. And really, that's the invitation that's open to each and every one of you here today to discover for yourself those benefits. So shall we get started with the first part of the exercise? Let's go right ahead. So the first thing to do is to just ensure that you're sitting comfortably. And we're going to do this together, okay? So just sit yourself comfortably and relax as best you can. Just take some beautiful nourishing breaths. That's it. And relax.
okay. Now, just breathing normally, completely normally, your regular breathing pattern for now. We're just going to place our attention and our intention on a fixed point, on an object in front of you. So wherever you are in the room that you're in, choose just now. You don't have to look at me for this part of the exercise. Just choose for now a fixed point in the area in front of you, at least a few feet away from you. And um, you also want to be sure that um, it's slightly above the level of your eyebrows. So find your fixed point slightly above the level of your eyebrows and just look there consistently. So just keep your focus there. You can blink if you have to, but certainly just relax and breathe normally. Now, as we're gazing at that fixed point far off in front of us, without moving our eyeballs, but you can blink, just keep the body perfectly still and allow yourself to see everything that's at the left of you, just to notice it. So for instance, there might be a bookcase that you're aware of at the left of you and there might be a door, for example, at the right of you. So just be aware of what's at the left of you in your periphery and also what's to the right of you in your peripheral vision. You may also be aware of what's on the floor or even above on the ceiling. So just be aware of all of that and then close your eyes, resting your eyeballs. Now just open your eyes and do exactly the same thing again. Fix your eyes on a position, the same position, and just notice without moving your eyeballs, everything on the left of you, everything on the right of you, everything on the floor in front of you, and everything that may be above you. And you may find your eyes becoming tired. Just rest your eyes by closing them. And then we're just going to open our eyes again. And do the same thing again. Fixing on the point that you've chosen. Blinking if you have to, otherwise remaining perfectly still with your eyeballs still. And notice everything, everything on the left. Everything on the right, everything on the floor, and also everything above. If your eyes are tired, close your eyes, rest your eyes, and open your eyes again. And now look at me. And what we're going to do now is we're going to move our eyeballs left to right, and left to right, and left to right and left to right. So go ahead and do that. Eyeballs left to right, left to right, left to right and left to right. Trying not to move the body or the head in particular. And close your eyes, give them some rest. Breathing normally. And just open your eyes for me again. And left to right, and left to right, and left to right, and left to right. And close your eyes again, giving them some rest. Breathe normally. And open your eyes again, and it's left to right, and left to right, and left to right, and left to right. And close your eyes. And this time, bring the palms of your hands up to your eyes, completely covering your eyes. So you're covering both eyes with the palms of your hands 
and make sure there's very little light getting in between your hands and your eyes so that you're immersing your eyeballs in complete darkness. And just allow yourself to enjoy immersing your eyeballs in complete darkness there. And just do that for a few seconds more. Excellent. So now just remove your hands and very softly and gently when you feel ready, just open your eyes and just notice what you notice. And let's repeat that. Just bring your hands up to your eyes again, completely immersing your eyeballs in total darkness. And just look. Just look. So you can open your eyes underneath your hands if you choose in the complete darkness. Otherwise, look within. Keeping your eyes closed and seeing within. And just notice what you notice. I wonder. What do you see? So just take your hands away from your eyes and very softly and gently open your eyes and just notice what you notice. Excellent. Now, for the next minute, just simply allow yourself to receive. So fix your attention on me with your intention, completely devoted to receiving and integrating the quantum touch frequencies for seeing the subtle life force energy. So just again, sitting comfortably, breathing normally, simply allowing yourself to place your attention and your intention on receiving and integrating the quantum touch frequencies for seeing the subtle life force energy, for seeing substratally. So I'm offering those frequencies to you all now. Allow yourself to be in those frequencies. Excellent. And just take some really super nourishing breaths and notice what you notice. And that's the first part of the process complete. Well done. So for the second part of the process, in normal circumstances, we would use a mirror. But in this circumstance, I'm inviting you to use this video as the mirror itself. So normally you would do this uh, part of the process by standing in front of a rather large mirror. So usually a bathroom or a, a dressing room, something like this, has a mirror that has a few feet um, visible around the body. So the best time usually to do this would be in the twilight when you're in almost dark, but not total darkness. Um, but you don't have to. It really just depends on whether or not 
you can see the energy in all uh, variations of the light. So let's give this a go together here and now using the video as the mirror and just allow yourself to gaze at me in a sort of daydream fashion. So you're not looking directly at me, you're sort of looking but not looking. So the idea here is to relax and to let go. So, breathing normally, sitting comfortably with a soft gaze. So just start to look without looking at uh, the left of me and also to the right of me on the video. And you would do the same thing with yourself in front of the mirror. So just looking to the left of me and looking to the right of me. Now, don't reach out for the energy to reveal itself to you. Instead, just allow it to reveal itself to you. Soft eyes in a daydreamy fashion. And what you'll start to notice, and I guarantee it's highly, highly possible to see this on a video, is that you'll start to notice something called the etheric double, which is this sort of first layer of the subtle life force energy that typically hangs out um, just an inch or two above the body. It's a bit like a heat haze on a road on a summer's day. Can you all see that? That is the life force energy, the substratum of the universe. So um, just allow yourself to invite that even more, and it will. And look, for example, if I just move slightly to one side, what happens to the energy? And if I move to this side, what do you notice happening to the energy? Now, this is a beginning. You can certainly practice this every day. Watch, become the observer of the energetical field, and it will deepen and develop. So that's the mirror exercise. The third part of the exercise that we're going to do together is, and you may well be able to do this right now, otherwise certainly practice it in your own time, but just take your, um, your vision to the corner of the room that you're in, any corner. Now, we're not going to look directly at the corner. We're going to look at the air between you and the corner. So sometimes in the beginning, again, it's best to do this in the twilight, but I wonder what you can see right now. So remember being nice and relaxed and in that sort of daydream energy with soft eyes. And just allow the energy to reveal itself to you. That's where our attention is placed. And that is our intention to see the energy. And notice what you notice in the space, in the air, between where you are and the corner of the room. And most likely, you're going to see the subatomic particles of the universe dancing and sparkling with a sort of static effect. And again, that's a beginning that will develop and deepen from there. So again, play with that particular part of the process and have fun with it. And the fourth part of this process really is just uh, something that you can do every single day. Just bring your attention to it. Bring your attention and your intention to being the observer of the life force energy, having that intention to see substratally, go out into nature, go to a coffee shop or a library or anywhere at all, 
and just have the idea of watching, observing the dynamics between people or the, look at the edges of trees, for example. Again, sometimes in the beginning, it's best to do these things in the twilight, but it's not always necessary. So go into nature as an example and just take a look. Invite the trees to reveal their energy to you. And again, take your soft gaze to the edges of the trees, nice and relaxed. Don't reach out for it. Allow it to reveal itself to you. So that's the exercises, all four, which brings the process, the group process, to a completion. The point is to practice all of these parts every day, and it will deepen. So um, it'll be an absolute joy to hear from you. I would be over the moon to hear from you about your experiences, uh, to answer any questions you may have. So you can always contact me, Deborah at quantumtouch.com. So thank you so much for watching and for listening in. It's been an absolute, uh, an absolute privilege to share this process with you. Um, I wish you very, very happy seeing and perceiving um, and have an absolutely blessed day. And now Karina Grant is going to share principles of energy healing, specifically how we use them with quantum touch. Hi, my name's Karina Grant and I'm based in London, UK, and I'm a quantum touch practitioner and instructor. I found quantum touch in 2005 when I was looking for a way to help my father who had a type of Parkinson's called MSA. And I loved quantum touch straight away. I loved the way it gave me the ability to help my dad and my loved ones. And I decided pretty early on, in fact, immediately that I really wanted to teach this and to share this. And so what I'd like to share with you now are a few of the principles that quantum touch are based on. So the first principle is that quantum touch is based on cultivating life force energy. And what that means is that we are using the energy that's all around us, the energy that is abundant, the energy that is making up every living being, absolutely everything in the universe. So we could call it universal energy, we can call it life force energy, we can call it chi or ki or pneuma or mana. Every tradition, every culture that's ever existed all talks about this animating current that is life force energy. And what that means is we're not drawing on our own energy. We're not drawing on using our mental energy or anything tiring like that. We're accessing, we're plugging in. It's the difference between using our own batteries, and that's when we start to feel really tired, or using a plug-in so that we've got that constant flow of electricity, that constant flow of energy. And so the first principle is, that it's not our own energy we're using. It's life force energy. It's the energy that is bigger than us and that flows in abundance. Then we use the breath. So we use breathing, intention and attention. So three aspects that we bring in to really learn how to bring more of this life force energy into our body, into our field, into our whole being. And so in quantum touch in level one, we learn five basic quantum touch breaths. And those breaths bring an enormous amount of life force energy into our flow. So we use the breaths to physically increase our life force energy. And then we use our intention to direct that flow very specifically. So you've got this enormous abundant life force energy and then our intention gives us the ability and the opportunity to direct it very specifically to a particular place in the body for instance or anything at all that requires more support 
more love, more energy. So we use our intention to do that. And there's been tons of uh, books written and lots of science around what happens when we set an intention. How does that affect things? How does that affect consciousness and set things in motion in a particular way? So the way that I look at intention is as if we are putting in the zip code or the postcode, however you want to say it, into the sat nav, into the satellite navigation, into the GPS. And I put that in. And then all I need to do is drive. The route comes up for me. It's effortless. And so when we learn how to run the energy and to get that energy flowing, I simply need to put that zip code in with my intention and then follow the journey by cultivating the energy. And so it's a very simple way to work with absolutely anything in the same way that we could drive anywhere that we want to by putting the address in. Our intention, and we learn this in Quantum Touch, can be very specific. And then we are guiding the energy to go to a specific place. So now all this extra support, it's like having much more support, much more flow, much more energy going to this place that requires it. And then we learn how to cultivate our attention. And that's a very powerful thing because these days our attention can be very fragmented. And so we can be distracted and all kinds of information coming in at us. And so it's so helpful. It's so important for our mental and physical well-being to learn how to focus attention very purposefully. And so now we're in a mindful, attentive state. We've got the breath flowing through us and there's lots of science around the benefits of being in that focused present state. And we've got this wonderful volume of air, this life force energy that's being cultivated and raised. And our intention is directing it very specifically to something, to someone, to an area of the body. So now we have three things, breath, intention, and attention to raise this life force energy, this universal energy that we're speaking about and direct it to a place. Now, what happens is, is we've got this phenomenon called entrainment and it is fascinating. And once you understand this, you'll be able to see it, not just in healing, not just in quantum touch, but you'll understand how it affects all areas of your life as well. So what entrainment means is, Let's take a social example, because I think this is the example that people can relate most to, perhaps. Have you ever been in a room and somebody walks in and they're really happy and they're really vibrant and they just had the best day and they've got this high energy about them and they're just emitting all this joy and they walk in and they don't even need to say anything. They're just happy and you feel it and you feel their joy. You feel their happiness and you start to feel happy. They haven't actually even said a word. You're in training to their energy. You're coming up and in training to their energy. And then on the flip side, have you ever been in a room where somebody's really low and they walk in and they don't need to say a word? You feel that. You feel that heaviness. You feel that energy and you start to feel that low, heavy energy. And they haven't actually said anything, but you feel it and it starts to affect you. And this is something that's a huge issue for many sensitive people is that they're feeling everybody else's stuff. Now, what's happening is we're in training a lot of the time to the people around us, to the environments around us. And so what the beauty of quantum touch, one of the beautiful things in quantum touch is that we learn how to raise our energy to a super high level. When that happens, Let's say I'm focusing on myself using everything we've talked about so far. I've raised my energy up here. The person that I'm giving quantum touch to starts to entrain to that higher energy. So there's three possibilities that can happen. Either the higher, either the lower energy comes up to the higher energy, which we've just talked about, or the reverse. The higher energy comes down to the lower energy where you start to feel someone else's stuff or you just find your meeting point. You kind of meet in the middle. 
what really sets quantum touch apart is we spend the whole session focusing and learning how to raise our own personal energy which means that whoever i'm giving a quantum touch to by default because i'm using all these high vibrational techniques is going to come up they're going to meet me up here so other people will start to meet you up here rather than you coming down all the time to meet other people at a lower level if that's where they're at. And so instead of having experiences throughout the day where depending on who you're around, you're kind of going like this, oh, I'm with someone who's vibrating in a really high level and then lower and higher and lower, what we're doing is we're creating a consistently high vibration the other person then entrains to that. They start to mirror that high vibration and then their own innate healing intelligence kicks in and things start to return to balance. It flips traditional therapeutic approach on its head because instead of us focusing on the client, we're focusing on raising our own energy. Now, there's many examples of entrainment. It's a natural phenomenon. If you look into it, it's absolutely fascinating. One of them is grandfather clocks. So if I brought in grandfather clocks, a bunch of them, and I put them against the wall, they would initially be ticking independently or ticking at their own speed. After a few days, they would tick together. They would have harmonized and they would start to tick at the same speed. The sound waves are in training through the wall and they harmonize. Another example is women sharing a house or a dormitory. Their biological rhythms, their hormonal cycles start to synchronize and they start to have the same hormonal cycle. They're in training biologically to each other. And there's so many examples of this. Fireflies. They light up independently at first in a tree. After a while, they all light up together. So there's so many examples of entrainment in nature. And what we're using in quantum touch is this ability for us to learn to raise vibration. And then the other person experiences that entrainment pro process. And then their innate healing kicks in. Their innate immune system or body intelligence or whatever words we want to put to it. So if we look at it from that perspective, if I'm spending the whole session raising my vibration so that the other person has a high energy to entrain to, what's happening to my energy through the session? Well, I'm going to experience, we say in quantum touch, when you give a healing, you receive a healing because you're putting yourself into high states of health by bringing in that breath, by learning to focus our attention in very loving and positive ways and learning how to cultivate specific intentions. And so from that perspective as well, all healing is self-healing, which means we can't heal anyone else. We can hold a high vibrational space for them to entrain to, but it's their body that does the healing, their body that goes back into balance. And that's an amazing way to look at healing because it empowers the person receiving. So Richard Gordon, the founder of Quantum Touch says, a great uh, healer was someone who was sick and got well. A really great healer is someone who was really sick and got well really quickly. So it's very empowering for the person. So we, one of the principles is that all healing is self-healing. What is pain? What is dis-ease? So many people come to Quantum Touch looking for ways to help with pain, ways to help with conditions for themselves, for loved ones, and rightly so, because Quantum Touch is so effective for these things. But in Quantum Touch, we look at pain not as a failure, not as something that we need to put a plaster on or, or squash or get rid of. We look at it as a communication, as a way of telling us where has the balance gone out of alignment in the body? And if I listen to that pain, to that alarm system, it's basically saying, bring more energy here. 
bring more love here. And so we work with that communication. We work with the pain and often the pain can move as you're giving a healing session. And it's so intelligent, the energy is so intelligent that it will often lead you back to the place, to the source of where the issue started in the body, which is, again, it's such an intelligent process, it's fascinating. And so working with pain and, and really listening to it and honoring it and understanding that it's just a signal of communication directing us to where the energy is needed to go and to flow more is one of the principles of quantum touch. And now Theo Ouellette is going to discuss the vibration of love and how it affects energy healing. So I first learned about quantum touch after the birth of my second son. He was I think around 11 months at that point. And I had been working in healthcare and I just really wanted to help people. I wanted to help people heal, which I mean, we learn quite quickly with quantum touch that all healing is self-healing. So I wasn't going to be the one being the healer, but back in the beginning, when I was all new to this, I was so excited that I was going to learn how to heal people. And I didn't feel like I was able to do that in my capacity. So I was just one day searching. Uh, YouTube videos and they came across Richard Gordon's. I love the idea to use such natural principles to help people heal. And it's funny enough because there was one weekend in August, I wanted to get away with some girlfriends, have like a girl's trip, and nobody was free that weekend. And then I learned about Quantum Touch and sure enough, there was a workshop near my house on that same weekend. So I booked a hotel and went and learned Quantum Touch and right away it resonated with me with just how natural it is. Uh, we're working with the vibration of love. Love is our most basic and fundamental energy and the core essence of life force energy which we use in this work. It's the foundation of all healing and the antidote to pain. Love is our essential nature. And when you hold your newborn baby, you can't help but feel that love and experience that love. And it probably wasn't until then that I really became aware of it and just how powerful it is. It's not just some sort of hallmarky fall in love kind of love. It's our essential nature of who we are and what we are. We don't have to try and be more loving or work at being more loving. Uh, and I like how Richard uses the example of a rock. Like a rock doesn't need to try to be more rock-like. It just, it is. I could just be loving. I could just be and be present. And then the idea of just being present with my kids, it just, it made a lot of sense. And I was so excited to uh, continue on with this work. And the phenomenon in which this works is through resonance. So when two similarly tuned vibrations meet, energy can be transferred between the two. And this happens with human beings, with animals, sound waves, electrical waves, and electromagnetic waves. Uh, so an example is if you press the A key on a piano, the A vibration travels through the air and it will string the A key on a nearby guitar. Similarly, humans share this same resonance. We can share our emotions and it telegraphs through the air. And we know this because if you walked into a room and two people were in there and you didn't hear what they were saying, but they were having an argument, you feel that, right? You feel that tension, it's awkward, it's heavy. Uh, and likewise, if they were having a fun time, telling jokes, even though you didn't hear what they were saying, you walk into that room and you feel that lightness, that airiness, right? It's trusting that we're already feeling these. These are natural aspects of our nature. and beautiful thing about quantum touch is it just puts it all together into one simple technique and then you can run the energy and you feel all of these benefits. Then that leads into entrainment where they will meet at the dominant vibration and all of this just really made sense because after being a young mom, skin to skin is strongly recommended. And skin to skin is when you have your newborn baby and you place them on your chest with no clothing or fabrics uh, 
in between. So it's literally skin to skin and they can feel that. And skin to skin has been well documented. They recommend uninterrupted skin to skin for at least the first two hours. And this has been proven to stabilize the baby's temperature, blood sugar, heart rate, breathing, oxygen levels, encourages breastfeeding, weight gain, uh, so many things. They say it encourages communication and connection with your baby, better sleep, decreased pain, uh, the baby's able to arrive, less crying. And I had learned about that as a young mom. So then when I learned about quantum touch, I was like, oh, that makes sense because it's the same principle. You're, you're putting that baby on your chest and you're feeling that love for them and your energy is being shared. Uh, and you feel that transfer. And I really noticed that after the birth of my second. There was just a lot of very stressful life events around that time. And I knew that when I put my baby on my chest, I just felt so much better. So then when I learned about quantum touch, I was like, oh, that makes sense because I already had these experiences that I was able to look back on. Another example of resonance that I know in my day to day is if I am feeling anxious or stressed, my kids notice that and they pick up on it and their behaviors start to act out, right? They want my attention instead of me being focused on my own issues. And I notice that. So when I notice those behaviors kind of getting out of control, I can just pause, take a step, run the energy, center myself, and I can see those behaviors kind of melt away, right? When I can be present with them, I mean, that's what kids want. They just want us to be present with them, to watch them play, because when we're present, we're sharing that love. They know that vibration of love, they can feel it, and that's what they want from us. And I think it's been beautiful learning Quantum Touch because it's helped me as a parent so much, and I continue to use all of these tips and techniques in my day-to-day -day with my kids. It does make it easier. Uh, I like to think of Quantum Touch as a self-regulation tool. So when I notice my day spinning out or I notice unwanted feelings coming up, I can take a break, celebrate what I've become aware of, and run the energy and be curious about it. So another principle that I love is that we acknowledge the body's innate intelligence. So our body already knows how to heal. We don't need to tell it how to heal. If you get a cut or a scrape, you don't have to sit there and be like, heal, heal. Uh, your body already knows how to do that. Our innate body intelligence is the blueprint deep inside of us. And as long as we're living, our inner healer is orchestrating on our behalf. It's clearing toxins, creating health and wellness, bringing balance and alignment into our being. Uh, it's really just trusting that our body already knows what we need and will create the necessary shifts to bring us back into balance. And it's really just we can create this high vibrational field that we can then entrain to and knowing that our body is going to use that energy as it sees fit for our greatest good, for our highest healing. And in that way, I don't need to know what that's going to be. I just set that higher intention because the other really cool thing about this work is it happens on all levels. So physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, your being knows how to best use the energy. So I don't need to, I mean, if I'm running the energy on myself, I don't need to know the best way. I can just trust that I can access that love, tap into those higher vibrations, and trust that my body's gonna know how to heal. Which, another thing I really learned when I went through the whole pregnancy and labor thing, because I didn't know how to deliver a baby, but when I realized that I could just relax and trust my body, my body knew how to do that. And thank goodness, I didn't have to figure it out. I just had to breathe and be present draw on that love and it's really just trusting your own bodies and I think that's so cool about when I get to work with clients is I don't need to know all the disease processes I don't need to know pathophysiology I don't need to know their whole story I can simply offer the energy and trust that their body's going to accept what it needs and use what it needs for its healing and of course, the always really nice side effect is the practitioner receives the energy too. So 
when we think back to the principles of resonance and entrainment, if the practitioner is using these techniques to raise their vibration for the client to entrain to it, I mean, the fact that we're raising the vibration, we're going to have access to that too. So in this way, I get to experience and benefit from all of this energy, just like my clients do. So it's really cool to share that with them and to experience that in my own life. And it makes it so much fun to help others. And I mean, not that I'm doing it to help myself, but isn't that really cool how we can come together and help each other and in return, we're helping ourselves. It's kind of this beautiful connection. And I just love to think about how cool it would be if I can send energy out to other people, then they're probably sending energy to me too. And it's changed the way I think about group dynamics and being in community. Uh, I think it provides a really cool way for us to support each other and in that way we're supporting ourselves. So it all just works together, which is really cool. And because healing can happen on all different levels, people can experience all sorts of things during a session. You might notice a momentary flare up in pain and it's kind of like the body's way of celebrating that release and bringing your awareness to allow it to move out, right? The energy has a way of awakening what is stored within us. And this can go on different levels. So sometimes there's an emotional catharsis and there'll be tears, crying, laughing, um, any sort of physical movement. Sometimes even when you're making physical adjustments, your body needs to move to allow those shifts to happen. And I mean, they don't always happen in that moment. Sometimes the energy needs to integrate into your being and hours later, then your body will make those shifts, right? Once again, we're trusting our inner healer and that it already knows what to do. So it's always comes back to being present, right? Tuning into that vibration of love and allowing the shifts to happen as they are needed. So prior to my first quantum touch workshop, I had no awareness to energy. And looking back now, it doesn't surprise me that this came about after the birth of my children. I mean, people talk about mother's intuition and I really feel like because I was so focused during my pregnancies to feel the baby's movements, feel those first kicks, I started tuning into my body, actually gaining an awareness of my body. I mean, previous to trying to feel for a baby's kick, I had no need or idea of feeling into my body. I, that just wasn't something I was taught or that I seeked to understand. And during the pregnancy, when you become aware and you feel those movements, and then after pregnancy, I started feeling these phantom kicks. And I've heard this phenomenon from other women too. And it's not that the baby's still kicking in my tummy or I'm feeling that. It's just, I'm feeling my bowels move. And I'm sure they rumbled and moved like that before. I just wasn't aware of it. And it really, I think, just set me up for understanding the energy because I now have this greater connection and understanding of being present with love. The importance of skin to skin touch that we can share this energy amongst us to benefit our health. And then as you tune into your body, you just become more aware. And I think that also speaks to the life force energy because life force energy is all around. It's, it's everything. It's us. It's through us. And if you weren't aware of it, you just don't notice it. But as you become aware of it, you notice that it's everything. So it's just really cool how it all comes together. And I think that's all what I was really drawn to quantum touch for was because all of the principles are just so natural. And I could look back and see all those examples in my life prior to learning it. So it just made sense for me. I use these techniques on a daily basis. Learning quantum touch has really just become part of my life and I think that's really evident in in my life. So I used it with my pregnancies. Uh, we used it to get pregnant with our third. We were 
having miscarriages prior, and it really helped me to move through a lot of anger and emotions that I was holding on to, and just ideas I had about parenting that did not or was not going to serve me moving forward. And then when I got pregnant with my daughter, I was able to use these techniques and run the energy, and I felt a really strong connection with my daughter, which was really cool. And whenever I noticed symptoms coming up, I could just take a moment, run the energy, set my intentions, and really just celebrate the pregnancy, which also was really cool. I had heartburn in previous pregnancies, but now since learning quantum touch, I was able to run the energy and my heart my heartburn would resolve within an hour. And then when it came time for delivery, I was a part of some energy share groups and they asked if they could send energy to me for labor. And I was like, of course. So that was awesome. That was also around the time of March, 2020. So you could imagine the amount of stress that I was facing during those times and nothing happened. So I showed up next week to this energy ship group and I was still pregnant and definitely a week or so overdue. So they sent energy again, uh, which really just helped me to relax into the moment. So then when I did go into labor, uh, contraction started that it was noticeable probably around 8 a.m and I was already nine days overdue, so I didn't want to make a big deal about, you know, any feelings or uh, get my hopes up, you know. So I just kind of kept it with myself and started working on breakfast for the family and just writing down when my contractions were happening just because it was, my husband really wanted me to monitor that. Uh, just so that we knew when to call the midwife and thankfully we were already planning a home delivery so as the contractions got closer together uh, we called the midwife and by the time we called the midwife it was probably around 12 12 30 uh, we grabbed some lunch just grab some lunch at home to eat uh, the midwife got to us probably around one o'clock so at this point I had been in labor for five hours and definitely manageable. I was breathing through each contraction. Whenever I noticed a contraction, I would just like brace myself on the desk and I was able to move through them. So I didn't think I was very far along. Uh, when the midwife checked me, I was already eight centimeters dilated, which was a huge surprise because I didn't feel like I was that far along. I felt like I probably should have been in more pain. Uh, so I texted to close girlfriends who understand energy. I was like, send me your energy, uh, send me your labor vibes because this is happening. And it was really just the last 15 minutes that it felt unbearable and like I wouldn't be able to make it through. And in that moment, I could really just tune into my breath and I was able to connect to that energy that had been sent to me and that was being sent to me. And just to moms who had delivered before me, I wasn't the first woman to deliver. I wasn't the first woman to deliver naturally. I was able to draw on that energy uh, and that totally got me through. And then before I knew it, I had my baby on my chest. We were doing skin to skin. And it was such a beautiful experience. So she was born at 1.39. So the midwives weren't even at her house very long. They basically came and got everything set up. And it was just such a beautiful moment. And I just have to think if I was able to do it, anyone's able to do it. And I really wanna share this message. And not to diminish what women go through because I think every experience is unique and meaningful, but maybe just to offer an option that maybe there's another way to do this. And the other cool thing is when we work at the quantum well, we can play with space and time. So we can go back to ourselves in those moments and offer that healing and that love that would have helped us and supported us. Uh, which is something I'm really playing with now and it's fun to explore because I had learned this at the beginning or I should say I learned this between my second and my third kid I can now go back to previous um, even back before I got pregnant with my first when we were struggling with fertility and I could send myself love in that moment and I've noticed so much healing and just my memories of those moments have softened and 
than my reactions and it's changed, uh, which is really cool to experience. And then to take a moment and just remember like, this is breathing and intentions and we are powerful. So that was my experience and Now I use it as a daily tool. So when I become aware of issues or symptoms, I'm able to work through them, right? Run the energy, set my intentions, and it's just become a way of life for me, uh, something that I do. And I'm excited now to teach my kids. I haven't formally taught them, but I think honestly, they already know this stuff and they naturally do it. So it's really cool to be with them and experience them. I mean, I would have loved to learn this when I was a child or have been supported with this information. So uh, I'm really excited that I had learned this and I get to continue with this work and share it with my kids and my family and other families. Uh, it's really cool. And now Renee Morris and Gustavo Carvalho are gonna discuss how to get started with Quantum Touch. Hello. So now that you've learned all about Quantum Touch, what it is, what it can do for you, you've heard stories about it, and you've learned about some of the techniques that are used in Quantum Touch, I'm sure that many of you are hearing the call to start your own journey in Quantum Touch. And that really is how it works with energy healing and with quantum touch is that people get exposed to the work, they hear about the stories, they learn about other people who are doing it, and then they feel the call to explore it for themselves. They feel the resonance within themselves to go and start their own journey, their own adventure with quantum touch. There are basically five ways to get started with quantum touch. The first one is by downloading a free kit in our website www.quantouch.com you can start right away and you see free information there and you understand how quantum touch works and its principles today i'm here to tell you about the free starter kit that quantum touch offers so if you go to the main quantum touch website which is www.quantumtouch.com Right away near the top, you'll see a button to get your free starter kit. So if you click on that button, then it'll take you to a screen where you input your name and your email address, that's it, and then you send it off, and shortly thereafter, you'll receive your starter kit in your inbox of your email. So all you have to do is go to the website, www.quantumtouch.com, click on get your free starter kit, and then fill in the, the, your name and your email address, send it off, and that's it. So shortly after, you'll receive your starter kit in your inbox. Your starter kit includes a lovely welcome message from Richard Gordon, founder of Quantum Touch, and it also includes three free gifts. Who doesn't love free gifts? <laughs> so the first gift is a 35-page excerpt from Richard Gordon's book, Quantum Touch, The Power to Heal. So I have a copy here, it's my own copy, and you can see it's very well, well worn and well read. I love this book. This was my introduction to Quantum Touch, and I refer back to this book often um, just to refresh my memory on certain aspects of it and just to reacquaint myself with some of the Richard's words and the stories in the book as well. So you will receive as part of your free starter kit a 35 page excerpt from this amazing book, which you'll love. I know that you'll be inspired to buy the book yourselves after reading the 35 page excerpt, but it's worth it just to hear from Richard Gordon himself the words that he has written about quantum touch in that book. So that's your first free gift. The second free gift is a one hour long audio recording from Richard Gordon himself. And it's a recording of him talking to an audience and who it's their first experience learning about quantum touch. 
Richard is a very dynamic and interesting speaker. So you will love this one hour audio recording, hearing him talk about quantum touch, what it has done, hearing his stories from his many years of experience since founding this amazing self-healing modality. So that's your second free gift. And your third free gift is also very exciting. <laughs> it's a 174 page ebook. That's all stories about quantum touch and animals. And if you haven't heard already, yes, you can use quantum touch on animals, both domestic animals and wild animals. And it's a very, very powerful technique. Animals are extremely responsive to energy work, to energy healing, to quantum touch. And you, your mind will be blown when you read these stories. And then when you learn the techniques yourself, and are inspired to try it for yourself on the animals around you in your life um, or wild animals outside. The stories are absolutely amazing and it's not just stories about dogs and cats. There's a story about a snake, squirrel, a mouse, horses, sheep. So all kinds of incredible stories about the power of quantum touch on animals and it's a 174 page ebook so it's huge filled with these amazing stories that i know you will love so that's the summary of your free starter kit so i encourage you to go to the website www.quantumtouch.com click on the button to get your free starter kit fill out your name and email and send it off and then shortly thereafter you'll get access to these amazing free gifts so you can start your own journey in quantum touch thank you so much have a wonderful day the second option is by attending one of the free webinars these are weekly webinars organized by tyler wood sales and the link to the webinar is on the newsletter the third option is by reading the books i personally had my first contact by reading the books the first one was quantum touch the power to heal at the very beginning, I felt there was something different on this book. I got very interested when I found out that there was another book, Quantum Touch 2.0, The New Human. I was really excited when I learned about that content. It's impressive, it's mind-blowing. So my recommendation is to read the two books, at least the first one. And the second one is about a paradigm shift, a real change, a transformation you can have by using advanced techniques of quantum touch. A fourth option is the original workshop recorded by Richard Gordon. This workshop has approximately five hours of content. It teaches step-by-step step how to learn quantum touch. And you can find it on the website. There are also the workshops, on-site workshops and online workshops. There are workshops in several different languages, instructors in several different places of the world. I live in Canada and attended a workshop, online workshop with Deborah Gare, who is in Scotland. In another workshop, the instructor was located in Hawaii, Henry Fergio. And even the workshop organized here in Canada, I attended online with Eli Makina. So we have these two options, on-site workshops or online workshops. And there is also the hybrid mode, on-site and online at the same time. If you want to go further, you can become a practitioner. That's what I did. I was so amazed with what Quantum Touch can make for people's lives that I became a practitioner. On the website you can find the program we need to follow to become a practitioner. In one of his books, Richard Gordon says, when the person works with Quantum Touch, the life becomes a blessed life. I had forgotten that when I read, and when I started working with Quantum Touch, I realized that it is a blessing life, and I remember this part of the book when Richard Gordon says that. When a practitioner has some experience, they can become an instructor. Imagine the life you can have by running this life force energy whenever given a course. It's not by chance that the instructors are really happy with what they are doing. There are also other sources, like the website, as I mentioned several times here. The website has everything. All this information I'm seeing here you can find on the website step by step how to become instructor how to become a practitioner you can find the practitioners on the website you can find the instructors and also you can subscribe to the newsletter on the newsletter which is a weekly newsletter you can find the link every week there is a newsletter and a 
new link for the weekly webinar and also there is a youtube channel with a lot of content almost every day there is new content interviews with instructors practitioners cases and a lot of very interesting stories i am gustavo carvalho practitioner spanish liaison and quantum touch ambassador i'm looking forward to seeing you as being part of the beautiful quantum touch family and you see extraordinary things happening to you in a real transformation in your life.